alive and well and growing by leaps and bounds out there and has been the last two or three or four years. Um, and this is one of the one of the popular bills that's been uh, taken up by other legislators. I want to get to the subject of precincts uh, before we come to the end of this hour, but I do want to recommend a book that I've seen other people reading, and I think you are also recommending it. It's entitled Nullification, How to Resist Federal Tyranny in the 21st Century, and the author is Thomas E. Woods, Jr., and you can it's available online uh, for purchase. Nullification, How to Resist Federal Tyranny in the 21st Century, Thomas Woods. And he was a speaker at the Freedom uh, Action Conference in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, and you were a speaker at that conference also. Did you and Thomas Woods get to meet? Yes, we've met several times in different conferences, and uh, I actually got to meet him two or three years ago. I think it was three or four years ago. And uh, I've read a number of his books. You know, he's written quite a few books. And uh, that book, I couldn't recommend it any higher than any other book. It's a must-read for anyone that has any interest in this subject and the problems that we're facing today in our country. Well, maybe we can all uh, pool some money together. You and I, James, can put a little kitty together. We'll buy this for Dan Sullivan (laughs) and uh, give this as his gift so he can understand and overcome his fear of the issue of nullification. Um, on the issue of precincts, let's get to this before we uh, conclude this uh, great interview. Uh, precinct. Uh, a precinct is a geographical boundary within which the residents of that boundary all vote at a particular vote polling place. Within a House district or a Senate district are certain numbers of precincts. Those precincts are an important part of the political process to understand. And and it may may be a word or a description that you're not familiar with, but in the state of Oklahoma, and then we're talking just GOP, the Democrats are having the same thing. So whichever party you belong to, be aware of this. Statewide for the GOP on on Tuesday, February uh, 1st, 2011, the statewide Republican Party precinct meetings or elections or caucuses, as sometimes as they're referred to, are taking place from 7 to 8 p.m. that night. How important is it for people to participate in their precinct uh, elections? And they actually are going to be electing committees within the precinct. Your neighbors, how important is this for f- for the future control of a political party? It's, it's extremely important. I don't know how to really quantify it except to say that if you believe in a constitutional republic, if you believe, if you want to have freedom, then you need to participate you need to participate at this level and in this particular way because it is the way in which you will influence the party and the parties, no matter what your party is, and you'll be able to tell your party and those that get elected uh, as members of your party to legislature and all the other positions in government what you want them to, what kind of policy you want them to uh, pursue and enact. And so it's extremely important, and you know people think, you know, my one vote, my one phone call, and my one letter doesn't make any difference. But that's not true. I can tell people after serving a full 16 years in the legislature and being involved in politics for 20 something years um, that one, two, three, four uh, phone calls or letters or emails makes a huge difference because we usually get zero. And so if you will show up at precinct meetings, and even take that next step and go to a county convention, you have a tremendous amount of power and a large voice. What I think people don't understand at the beginning, and I didn't understand it, is that there are two kinds of elections. There's the general election that registered voters are all, it's open to all the registered voters, whether Republican or Democrat. You participate in a primary and you go and elect a candidate for your house rep, your senator, or or an issue, a question, a state question. You go to an election. That's one kind of elections. There's another set, and it's within your party. You actually have party elections, and you can elect the representatives within your party, these committees. Ultimately, if you... If you want to control who gets on the ballot in the state of Oklahoma as a presidential candidate, it starts by participating in your your precinct election on February 1st, 2011. You become a delegate. A delegate is somebody who is a member of that district. You just have to be a registered voter of that party. 
then you yes. you get to be a delegate to your, as you mentioned, your county convention. You, there's 77 counties. There'll be 77 county conventions. At that convention, there will be a sign-up sheet or or participation in the state convention. You then become a delegate to the state convention, which is the following month. Those delegates at that state convention get to vote on the rules, the state party platform, which is the statement of what the Republican Party believes, and then you also get to sign up to be um, the delegates to the Republican National Convention, which will be held in some other city. Well, two years ago it was held in Minnesota. There's a process that your your these delegates go through to be chosen because each state gets a certain number of delegates. Our state got 37 delegates. Some of them are elected and some of them are just uh, a natural. And you get to be part out of that. You get to be part of the Electoral College. The Electoral College is the one that actually elects the president. So how does that start? That starts at your precinct level. This is if we, if we can just help the public get over the mystery of what this process is, if this is all too complicated, just go to your precinct meeting and do that part and then learn how to do the next part. I mean, well, I think it's also, I was going to say, it's also important people know if they haven't ever done anything like this before or don't know how it works, you don't have to give a speech. You don't have to say anything publicly. You don't have to worry about being put on the spot or anything because none of that's going to happen. You, but you, you'll be able to vote, just like you said, Amanda, you'll be able to vote on all of those things and have a tremendous impact in the system, in the process. And it's so few people who participate. If it's you and your husband, you and your husband, or you and your wife, or you and your neighbor, whoever it is, and that's all who shows up at these precinct meetings, you can have a proper election of I vote for you and you vote for me. Done. Do the paperwork, turn it in, and then go to the county convention. And it's not. I, I can relate to the intimidation factor of under because I had not myself had never done this. But once you do it once, he's like. This was a whole lot easier than I thought. The advantage of being an elected committee person or chairman in your precinct is then you get access to what's called voter vault. And you get to find all the other people in your precinct who are part of your party or the other ones also. And then you have access to the other people who vote. And guess what? Your value to your elected official just went up because all of a sudden they know that you know the people that elected them. And you'll have access to the rankings of those people, whether they're a frequent voter or an infrequent voter. And then the political reality is those who are frequent voters have greater worth to a politician who's concerned about re-election than a guy that never votes. It, I mean, that's a reality. So it, exactly. it, it's, it's, it's worthwhile. It is reality. It is reality. It shouldn't be because once they're elected, they represent everybody. But uh, we've received too many push cards and political and participated in too many campaigns. And I think James, you saw this right. that some people are worth more to a legislator, <laughs> a potential candidate than others. Well, I get <clears throat> when I uh, talk to people who who think about getting into the political process, they have this idea because I had it too that there's there's just thousands of people involved in the whole process. And, but then once you get into it, you realize, my goodness, the room is so small. It's probably just a couple of hundred people, and you can change a, a precinct or a, or a county or or a state with just a few people. Some people think, man, you must have an army of 10,000 to be able to change policy and to change a state. And really, you don't. You just need a, a, a few dedicated uh, women and men that are, that are, that are willing to, to take up a little bit of time. And, 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 and you can change the course of, of, of where you live by just by just being involved. It is it's possible and it's doable. We're down to about a minute and a half, Charles. Is there anything that you would uh, just want to end with in closing on this uh, subject and and others? Yeah, you know, on this subject, we used to in this state um, conduct our presidential uh, uh, preference system, I don't want to say primary, but we would choose our presidential candidates by the caucus system, and that means it starts at the precinct level, and the decisions are made at the precinct level as they go up through the various steps, the county, the congressional district, and the state, and the delegates would be elected to the individual, um, on behalf of the individual presidential candidates, and then we change to uh, a strict 
primary system that we go to the polls and elect uh, or just to cast a vote for those presidential uh, candidates that we want to vote for. And the caucus system is much more efficient, but it's also much uh, more important. It carries a lot more weight. And there's a lot of interest in going back to that uh, system. And I actually filed a bill in the past. I refiled it again this year, just uh, about a week ago, to require that the primary elections be paid for by the individual parties and that we go back to the caucus system. Uh, it costs quite a bit of money to conduct a primary. Yes. And that's, that's our music, Charles, and we're going to have to have you back again to discuss that, that again, and we're going to be uh, drumming up support for that particular piece of legislation. We thank you for being our guest today on America in the Balance. That's the end of our program for today, and we thank you once again for listening.